This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. Today's video is brought to you by Surfshark. On the heels of today's hearing, the final hearing of the House Select Committee investigating the events of January 6, 2021, the insurrection, the failed coup attempt, the attempt to overthrow the United States government by way of overturning a free and fair and settled American election, the hearing today is going to provide a lot of new evidence for the Justice Department to comb over. But before that happened, this weekend, this letter, a few paragraphs of which I'm going to read, was posted, was published, was sent out. 38 members as of right now, 38 former members of Congress, 20 Democrats, 18 Republicans, virtually evenly split across the parties. And they wrote a letter admonishing the current Congress and urging them to begin ethics violations, ethics investigation, ethics violations investigations into members of Congress who aided in that aforementioned attack on the United States Capitol, our country, and our democracy. Now, the Constitution, Article 1, Section 5 of the Constitution, um, gives Congress the power to control their own proceedings up to and including the expulsion of its members, of a two-thirds vote, I think. We'll get to that, though. This doesn't have a lot of teeth in it, but it does tell you the, the, the influence that being a current member of the Republican Party, uh, the influence that Donald Trump has over that. Because when you're unencumbered, by the current setup in the Republican Party, you can say what the rest of us already know. You can put your name on a letter defending democracy. But if you want power in this current Republican Party, you can't do that. Uh, I'm going to read from this, and there are some great points in here. Uh, and then we're going to talk about that power of the Constitution. Before I get to that, though, a word from today's sponsor. Thank you, Surfshark. Surfshark. With flu, RSV, and COVID all going wild out there right now, who the heck wants to do their shopping in person? But handling the holidays entirely online also carries a risk. Internet shopping can open you up to just as many diseases, quote unquote, especially during this time of year. The cure? Surfshark. Surfshark is a virtual private network or VPN that encrypts all the data you send via the internet, your private messages, photos, passwords, and much more to keep you safe from the internet's sticky fingers. Surfshark is the best protection to be had online, hands down. Go to surfshark.deal slash dollamore to access 85% off of a two year plan plus three extra months for free. 85% off means Surfshark will protect all your data for less than $2 per month. And with that two bucks, you can run Surfshark on an unlimited number of devices. It's usable on all platforms, whether they be Mac or PC, Amazon Fire Stick or Chromecast. And Surfshark's strict no logs policy ensures your browsing data will not be harvested. Also, with their 30-day money-back guarantee, you can try all Surfshark's features completely risk-free. Keep your holidays healthy and safe with Surfshark. Save big and support this channel by going to surfshark.deal slash dollamore, where my special offer will score you 85% off of a two-year plan plus three extra months for free. That's surfshark.deal slash dollamore. Surfshark is all the defense you need for your online shopping. But if you're still intent on heading to the store, wear a mask. Happy holidays, everybody. So let's get into this that was published on Medium. Former members of Congress demand ethics investigation of lawmakers who sought to prevent transfer of presidential power. Dear members of the House of Representatives, we are former members of the House of Representatives, Republicans and Democrats, who watched in distress on January 6, 2021, as supporters of the former president assaulted the United States Capitol. 
We feared for each of you, including many of you who fled for your lives. As is now clear, January 6th was only one event among many that together constituted an extraordinary campaign to overturn an election. The scale and audacity of the campaign is profoundly troubling. Among the most alarming findings is that various members of Congress participated in it. We already know that the House Select Committee investigating the insurrection uh, uh, issued five or six subpoenas to current members of Congress, their colleagues, to come and testify about what they know, to come and testify about what they did on that day. Jim Jordan, Scott Perry, uh, McCarthy, Mo Brooks, Andy Biggs, all of these types who in some fashion, some form, had something to do with what took place that day. In McCarthy's case, he took a phone call. He talked to Donald Trump that day, refused the subpoena. Mo Brooks was on the stage and gave a speech alongside Rudy Giuliani, who talked about trial by combat. Andy Biggs was up to his neck in the pre-planning stages of this. The same with Scott Perry, who introduced Donald Trump to one of the others who will likely get a criminal referral today, um, who was ended up, Jeffrey Clark was going to possibly lead the De Department of Justice if Donald Trump was willing to burn it all down. And now we have members of Congress calling, calling it what it is. We now know, for example, that sitting lawmakers corresponded and met with White House officials and allies to plot various prongs of the campaign, including to advocate that the president declare martial law, that states submit false certificates of electoral votes to Congress, that the vice president, in contravention of his constitutional duties, interfere with the counting of electoral votes and that federal law enforcement authorities be enlisted to interfere with the election, among other startling facts. We also now know that various city lawmakers sought presidential pardons. These lawmakers stop short of storming the Capitol themselves, but they share a common goal with those who did to prevent the lawful transfer of power for the first time in the Republic's history. As with those who stormed the Capitol, they must be held accountable. And this doesn't, I'm not just talking, I agree with this. And I've been talking about it for over a year and a half and change now. I don't believe these people just need to be um, censured by the House of Representatives. They need to be expelled by the House of Representatives as given them the power in Article 1, Section 5, as I previously mentioned, of the Constitution of the United States of America. Each House may determine the rules of its proceeding, punish its members for disorderly behavior, and with the concurrence of two-thirds, expel a member. Now, in paragraph 9 of the 11 paragraphs that are, are posted in this letter, I'll link to it below. I'm not going to read the whole thing. They say this, Based on the facts and findings to date, we urge you to demand that the Office of Congressional Ethics thoroughly investigate those members who played a role in the events leading up to and on January 6th, and if, and if appropriate, that the House exercise its disciplinary functions. At stake is not only the institutional integrity of the legislative branch to draw and enforce bright lines of ethical conduct, but the principle of accountability upon which our democracy rests. Now, the reason I read the, constant, the, the Article 1, Section 5 first is because they don't draw any conclusions in this letter about specifically what should be done. That's a mistake, I believe. Now, maybe they're just uh, out of abundance of caution and lack of information that they hold. They're, they're holding back. I don't know. I don't believe that the Jim Jordans of the world and the Scott Perrys of the world and the Andy Biggs of the world and the Mo Brooks and the Kevin McCarthy's of the world need that much deference. 
We know what we know. We've witnessed what we've witnessed. With our own eyes, we watched the speech on the ellipse. With our own eyes, we watched the attack of the United States Capitol. We witnessed the rhetoric leading up to it, and we've witnessed the rhetoric that followed it from Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert, from Paul Gosar, from Louis Gohmert. These people who are sympathetic to the plight of those who attempted to overthrow the United States government. And then what follows? If you are a former member of the House of Representatives and would like to add your name to this statement, please complete this form. New signatories will be accepted until uh, December 31st. Sincerely, 38 former members of the House of Representatives of this country. 20 Democrats, 18 Republicans. So this number will grow. It will be 40 plus, maybe 50 plus, who knows? I believe it will continue to be a relatively even split between the parties because they're not beholden to the party structure anymore. Hopefully, hopefully this gets taken care of by the Department of Justice since Congress doesn't have any prosecutorial power at all, which is the way it should be. Uh, Hopefully the DOJ with with, with, uh, an expeditious manner gets this done, investigates and prosecutes those up to and including the ex-president of the United States. What do you think? I'd love to know. You can call, leave me a brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. I'd love to hear from you. Follow me on the social media. I am on Twitter for now, as long as it's beneficial. I am there at Dollamore. I'm also on Instagram and TikTok at Dollamore. I'd love to see you there. And if you appreciate what I do, the, my takes, (laughs) please consider supporting my work. Click the join button below, become a channel member, or go over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. Both those are great ways to support what I do right here. I love you guys. I appreciate you very much. I'll see you next time. We'll talk about all this in the aftermath. Be genuine. Take care of one another.